games. 109 of them have happened in his seven years in Atlanta. Burt Smith, Justin Porterfield, and Ramey Steins on the whistle. And here is the fifth seed Panthers winning the tap. And Nellie Cummings, one of the impact guys on Jeff Capel's roster in his first year with Pitt. He absolutely has been that. And I got to make sure that Josh Pastor knows I agree. I would have loved to play for him because he would have let me rock. <laughs> Burton at 18 feet gets us started. And that's a layup for Jamarius Burton. You're talking about a first team all ACC performer going under the screen. That's a mis mistake defensively. You can't give him easy ones like that to start the game. Kyle Sturdivant, an Atlanta player, will help engineer the offense. And of course, the lineups are brought to you by CDW. Sturdivant with Terry, Franklin, Kelly, and Debo Coleman starting here today for Pastner, and there is Kyle Sturdivant answering the Burton field goal with one of his own. And the Pitt starting lineup offered for you by CDW. Burton is the only returnee from a year ago in the starting five. Cummings, Elliott, Henson, and Federico. All off-season additions for Jeff Capel, and that's Henson. And the rebound and stick back for Federico, Federico, Fetty as he's known. One of the best names in the game. It was so nice, you have to say it twice, <laughs> Federico, Federico, I love it. We're gonna be talking about he and Javon Franklin's matchup the entire game. And Ramey Steins is stopping the clock here, I believe because the shot clock did not roll off the 30. And there is the ACC's coach of the year. And that is Jeff Capel the third now in his fifth season at Pittsburgh. 14th as a head coach with 234 victories. And he is excited about bringing his team here to Greensboro. Of course, a native of the state of North Carolina. Yep. And getting an opportunity to coach here in Greensboro once again in the ACC tournament. Of course, a tournament that he played in as he starred for the Duke Blue Devils. And. You there's there's his brother Jason of course this royal family of basketball in the state if you will their dad Jeff of course we got to get it we definitely got to get a camera on Mama Kate though I know she here. is she is right behind the scores table three rows off the floor behind her two boys who are coaching today there is Jerry there you go, Mama Kate and that's Jason's wife Ashley and that is the matriarch of Absolutely. the basketball family. And she knows her hoop. She's focused on the game. And <laughs> let me tell you, one, one group that she will not be easy on, it will be the officials. 4-2. <laughs> and they have reset the shot clock. A little game management required to figure out the math on this. So they got that done. And now Georgia Tech will put it in play with Coleman and Kyle Sturdivant. And this is Javon Franklin, who was the hero yesterday at the free throw line in the final second to beat Florida State. Start of it with four on the shot clock. Coleman, deep three from the front. Debo Coleman, 32% three-point shooter, had three of them yesterday against the Knowles. Well, this is the perfect game for you. If your name is Debo, you got to make sure that you assert yourself in this one. Blake Henson lines up a three, unable to knock it down. But the offensive rebound for Burton. And finally scooped up by Georgia Tech. Here's Lance Terry through traffic. Coleman again on the hard dribble. Sturdivant sets. Front rim missed that Federico grabs. And always interesting now, this is the second game of the day, I mean, second game of the tournament for Georgia Tech. It's always interesting to see how it is that teams who have played before come in against teams that have not played a great defensive stance from Pittsburgh. However, Debo Coleman up to the task at the end of the shot clock. Aker would knock down a big three early. Yep. Foul on Georgia Tech was against Lance Terry. It'll be his first. And here is the sophomore transfer from Helsinki, Finland, who went to Northern Oklahoma College. Federico, Federico, 63% free throw shooter, knocks the first one down. Corey, he might be the most improved player in the ACC from January 1 to March 1. Absolutely. And when you, this is probably one of the most improved teams in the country from November 20 mm. to now. Yeah. The Panthers won 20 games after getting off start. One and three on the year. They went on a tear starting off ACC play at four and oh. 
And Jeff Capel's group continues to get better as the season goes along. Early 6 5 lead. We get a Justin Porterfield foul. And ticketed on Henson. And a look at the one possession ACC games for Pitt. Well, the important part of that is look at all the W's. Mm -hmm. When you know that your team can win close games and you think about the one they lost at Miami, right? You know, that's a tough place to win, and that was the regular season ACC championship on the line. Here's Terry squaring over Federico. Boy, Lance Terry now knocking down threes. His 47th of the year. And Lance Terry played 40 minutes yesterday for Georgia Tech. So it's going to be interesting to see how the, how the legs hold up mm -hmm. for the Yellow Jackets throughout this game. Henson, hard dribble into traffic and got stripped away. Last touch by Pitt. It will go to the Jackets who lead by two early here. We have to mention that the Jackets started off yesterday making their first two three-point attempts, and then they went on a long drought. So can they maintain those legs and keep shooting it from beyond the arc? Josh Pastor wants his team to take those threes. Franklin. With Federico looming defensively for Pitt. And now here's Sturdivant against Cummings. And a double team forced by the Panthers. Knocked away last touch by Pitt. Corey, it's interesting. Nellie Cummings is an excellent second defender. But when it's one on one, it, it looks like some opponents want to steer it at Cummings sometimes when they have the ball offensively. That, that's a size matchup. Because most of the guys he's playing against have the size advantage over Cummings. So therefore, he's he uses quickness off the ball to be able to come up with steals, et cetera, as we see Javon Franklin, who's also undersized. Yeah. But it doesn't phase him at all. No. So Franklin came up with a second chance. Jackets couldn't convert. Here's Elliott squaring. And Craig Elliott, welcome to the ACC tournament. Yeah, Elliott, a 41% three-point shooter, one of two Pitt Panthers who have made over 73 pointers on the season. Yep. Elliott and Henson, those two guys. And now all of a sudden, Pitt's taking the lead for the first time on the triple by the Marquette transfer. Inside Franklin. Left corner, and that's Miles Kelly. And it spins out for Kelly. Here's Burton ahead of the pack. He's got Federico with him. Jamarius foul line again. And it bounds away, and Sturdivant finally collects. Kelly squares. That's behind the line considerably. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul on Franklin inside for Georgia Tech. Second on the Jackets, first on Javon Franklin. 9 8 pit. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life. Over 12,000 agents there to help guide you through life's happiest and most difficult times.
It absolutely is. As we go inside the play, you get an opportunity to see Miles Kelly in the corner. It's a game of inches, maybe not even an inch beyond the three-point line. However, when he lets go the three, it looks great. Everything feels great about it, but just one inch to the right makes it swirl around multiple times and go right off. One inch to the left, that's good for three. And, of course, we know how important three points is in a game mm -hmm. that's as tightly contested as this will be. And Georgia Tech, like you mentioned earlier, started three of four. They've missed their last four. So three of their first eight now are the Jackets. Two of those are threes. And yet Pitt still has the one-point lead. Lob inside. Federico, the catch and flush. Great action out of the timeout by Jeff Capel and the execution by his team on the floor. That was almost a blind pass by Henson. He knew that his teammate Federico would take care of it. Blake Henson, who was offered 30 football scholarships out of Deltona, Florida, including all power five. I had 30 power five football scholarship offers, Corey. Let me guess. Tight end. Uh, yes. Well, you know, there are a whole lot of NFL know, tight ends that aware. played college basketball. Yeah. So, again, football may not be over for Henson, but as a all-ACC performer this year, he's enjoying himself on the court. And should be. He's had a terrific year after a circuitous start to his college career from a basketball perspective. Wait a minute. I'm going to need you to break that word down for me later. Uh, bounce out of a jump shot by Burton. I'll let Dre help you out there. there you go. I, I, Dre yeah. can absolutely help. Dre can down. help you with circuitous. Here's third of it. Long three. Back rim miss. Federico clears. Pit by three. Here is Burt. Just a terrific all-around player for Capel. And you remember a year ago where Jamari Burton pretty much relied on a three-pointer for his success offensively? Yeah. He's not even the guy from beyond the three-point arc anymore. He does the majority of his damage finding his teammates and attacking the rim. Yep. And really, I think it's that productivity in other areas that got him a lot of player of the year consideration, Corey. A whole lot of it. And you see one of those areas is the fact that he's guarding Miles Kelly, so mm -hmm. he's the top defender on the perimeter for the Panthers. Yep. Here's Kelly flashing by Henson. Layup fell out. Franklin, the quick jump rebound and the stick back for Javon Franklin. One thing I'm certain Jeff Capel talked to his team about was they had to keep a body on Javon Franklin. He is spectacular for him. 19 rebounds to go along with his 10 points in their win yesterday. And you see him once again well above the rim, taking it off the rim, and then the quick second jump to finish it an opportunity for the M1. Free throw by Franklin to complete the three-point trip is no good. I had an interesting conversation with one of Georgia Tech's great players, B.J. Elder, who was on that national finals team in 2004. You remember him well? Yep. And he played with, in my mind, one of the best leapers I've ever seen in the ACC in Ishmael Muhammad. Agree? Mm-hmm. Okay. Henson on the drive. There's the scoop and a foul on the Jackets. And B.J. Elder, who now does player development, there's the great jacket from Madison, Georgia, who told me, he said, Wes, I think Javon Franklin is a quicker leaper than Ishmael Muhammad. That's high praise. That is high praise. And it comes with credibility because, of course, BJ has been there to see both these guys. So yep. I'll take his word for it, but I know that there's very few that can get off the floor as quickly as Franklin. Yep. Free throw by Henson is good. Blake Henson. Number one player in Kansas when he came out at Sunrise Christian Academy. Did not play at Iowa State. Averaged 10 and 5 at Ole Miss in 2020. He is a guy who has got one year left at 23 years of age. He can come back and play next year. And after the success he's had at Pittsburgh, I'm sure Jeff Capel would love to have him back. Yep. Communication breakdown for the Panthers on that one, but fortunately. Lance Terry unable to finish it. Sixth man of the year in the ACC's Nike Sabandi. He dumps it to Federico. Fetty looking for help, and here is Sabandi. Burton with 11 on the shot clock. He'll tee one up on Franklin. Just his 58th three-point attempt of the year, by the way. 
for Jamarius Burton. And there is Franklin, the quick jump and the dunk. A nice find from Sturgeon as well, attacking the paint, recognizing exactly where his team, what, what teammate was, to drop it off with the easy dunk. Four points for Franklin. Georgia Tech to within two. Jackets kind of play that amoeba. What is it? One three one, Corey. Most of the time, I guess. They're going to switch it up, but yeah. when you've got a guy in the middle of the zone like Burton that, that can only score it, but can also distribute the basketball, it makes it difficult to play zone against the Panthers. Yeah. You'll hear a lot of coaches in the ACC say you can use some of your offensive sets that you use against Syracuse against Georgia Tech, but not all of them. No, but the problem with when you play against the zone against Georgia Tech, Josh Pastor and his team disguise it so well. Oftentimes you don't know if they're in zone right. or the man for which zone. Right. They have multiple that they throw at you. Yep. Deep three. That's Cummings. Nelly Cummings. 56-3 of the year for Cummings, who's been double figures in six straight games. But better than that, he's been plus five assists to turnover during that stretch as well for Coach Capel. Yeah, Pittsburgh has two guys averaging over four assists per game. You think about Nelly Cummings as well as Jamarius Burton, so they've got a lot of special offensive talent. But speaking of offensive talent, my guy Kyle Sturdivant, his godfather is Damon Stoudemire. Wow. He learned a couple of things from the 1996 NBA Rookie of the Year. One of those things is to use his eyes to look the defenders off and drop the dime again. Kyle Sturdivant showing off a little bit here at the ACC Tournament. out the alternate angle of this afternoon's game the New York life above the rim cam streaming live right now on the ESPN app terrific way to watch the game absolutely is that I was fearful for that cam on Monday in practices though of course every team does their half court shots 
couple guys got a little too close to the camera. <laughs> Wanted the camera to at least be able to make it into the tournament. <laughs> Substitutions both ways during the timeout. Georgia Tech won't go very deep, but they took Franklin off. The, uh, Franklin stays on the floor. We've yet to see Jalen Moore, who is typically the sixth guy to play off past his bench, and that is it. Here's Cummings. Couldn't decide if he wanted to shoot it or lob it to Federico. I don't think Sturdivant made the saves in the corner from Miles Kelly. Now you mentioned that Franklin played all 40 minutes. He and Lance Kelly did not come out of the game yesterday. It could be interesting to see how much legs they have. Especially as we get into the second half of this one. Terry worked around the Franklin screen. Sturdivant. And the rebound on the backside, and that is Jorge Diaz Graham, one of the twins from Tenerife and the Canary Islands, who plays for Jeff Capel. Two talented twins who have a great future, it seems to be. Feder Federico fouled at the rim. Born in Egypt, grew up in Finland. He's playing with a guy from the Canary Islands, <laughs> right? And both of them towering yeah. over everyone in the Georgia Tech roster right now we talked about Josh Pastor and Josh Pastor told us their rebuild started with them playing small Javon Franklin at the five position who's six seven and he is clearly undersized compared to this front line for the pants. Federico was six in the first half quick check of our bracket Wake Forest has already advanced 77 to 74 with the Davian Williamson triple at the horn and after the game Corey Legendary Orange head coach Jim Beheim, maybe with some breaking news. I believe he's earned the right to cut down when he wants, you know, whatever that is. I guess no one really knows right now. I don't know why I ruffled feathers just because I said I, I want to coach. You know? It's up to the university. <laughs> They could call me tomorrow morning, but call me in and say, you know, you've done a great job here, and we think it's time to go. So, Mike Waters, who covers Syracuse for Syracuse.com, says Beheim quoted in the postgame here in Greensboro saying he gave his retirement speech on the court last Saturday. So, nobody picked up on it. So, there is strong consideration that Jim Beheim, quite frankly, just said he might have retired. Huh? I will say that in my conversations with Jim Behan, I was under the impression that he would do one more year. The last time we had any conversation regarding that was in early February. Right. If things have changed and Coach Behan is retiring, then we are losing a true legend in the game. But I would hope that we get to see Jim Behan at least one more season at Syracuse. Yeah. And uh, it's been picked up on the media, as you might imagine. Uh, not only Mike Waters, Brent Axe, of course, who's a familiar media member in Central New York to most Syracuse fans. Um, he concurs with Mike Waters in that it felt like Jim Beheim was announcing his retirement today, confirming that Saturday was his retirement speech, I guess. More to come, obviously, on the story. But that is one that is developing at least here in Greensboro after the Wake Forest win against the Orange. And by the way, this is a topic that everybody who covers this event from a media perspective knew was going to happen the minute Syracuse lost. We all felt like there would be more to come from Jim Beheim, especially after, as you mentioned, last Saturday's events honoring the 2003 National Championship team. Well, again, rightfully so, you're talking about, of course, the man with the second most wins in NCAA basketball history over a thousand wins for coach Behan. So we'll find out more about that perhaps with our studio folks at halftime hit by six here as we're into the last nine minutes and change of this first half and the Panthers so far doing a great job defensively on sure. leading scorer Miles Kelly for Georgia Tech has been un unable to really get anything going Elliot Jorge Diaz Graham a back rim miss of a three. Guillermo can't keep it alive. And here's Georgia Tech the other way. Terry 
Had it batted away. There's Jalen Moore with the recovery, and Coleman drops the three. And Devo Coleman, you mentioned only shooting 32% on the season from beyond the arc, but shooting the basketball very well here to start the day. Nine points for him mm. yesterday, off to a much better start this afternoon. Yeah, he's not only, he's only had three double figure games in his last nine. They need him to pick up some scoring if they want to try and pull another upset. Sabandi went baseline, and a block will be called. And that's going to be on Debo Coleman. That's his second. Team foul. team foul five on Josh Pastner's team. You mentioned Nike Sabandi, who the ACC's sixth man of the year, also yeah. had a strong performance here in Greensboro two seasons ago. 25 points for him mm -hmm. coming in in his first ACC tournament game, trying to match a performance similar to that coming off the bench here. This afternoon. So Bandy on the board averaged nearly 10 against the league. And you see the Diaz Graham's twins leave. Henson and Federico are back. Nike Sabandi went to Crispus Attics in Indianapolis. Corey started at Miami of Ohio before transferring to Pitt. You know what legendary college player, pro player, Hall of Famer went to Crispus Attics in Indianapolis? I'm gonna take a flyer at it. I would say the big O, oh, Oscar Robinson. See, see? <laughs> see you can. I would it. love to tell you that I knew the answer to that, but my man Kim Belton nah, always got nah. my back. <laughs> Figured somebody helped you hit the fastball, huh? All right, nice. More rookie orientation yeah, so for you, me. See, clearly, this, this is your first time. Yeah, that's my you rookie know, orientation. Kim, Kim Dre and I, we do this, you know, once right. a week. So, uh, you know, right. it's your first time. But hey, that was a great trivia question. Thank you. And I would have had zero idea if it wasn't for my super producer. Yeah. Well, you still work on securities. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Dre got yeah. Dre got to come up with oh, that. <laughs> is that right? You're leaning yeah. on Dre. Yeah, I'm leaning yeah. on Dre for that one. Here's Debo Coleman, the sophomore from Memphis, who actually played his final year of high school ball in. Callahan, Florida. He was Florida's Mr. Basketball. And with the way Pastor has tightened up the bench a little bit, Coleman is now kind of back to his minutes per game from a season ago. He played 20 or more a year ago in his freshman year in ACC play 18 times, and he's kind of moved back that route now here at the latter part of the season. But what he's also played is a lot more point guard yeah. this season. You know, with, at one point during the season, Josh Pastor did not start a true point guard. Debo Coleman was the guy that took over those ball handling responsibilities. There's Federico, and then Franklin knocked it off the rim. Goal tending on Franklin. Basket for the Panthers. Five-point lead for the five seed.
I have time for today's Worth a Watch brought to you by Principal. Corey? Javon Franklin, 10 points, 19 rebounds, three block shots. And more importantly, the pressure that he put on Florida State yesterday to try to keep him off the boards, even though they were unable to do it, was spectacular. And you're talking about a young man who comes out undersized each and every game, but able to play 40 minutes and not foul out of the game and stay aggressive on the floor for Josh Pasha the entire time. Well, Javon Franklin, Andy Demetra, who does Georgia Tech's games on the radio, said he has now four ACC games with 15 or more rebounds. The Georgia Tech record for ACC games with 15 or more rebounds is Malcolm Mackey, who has seven. Took Malcolm Mackey four years to do it. Javon Franklin's done it in eight games. Malcolm Mackey in the in the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets actually knocked me out of my first ever ACC tournament. <laughs> And there's an inside basket for Jalen Moore, a sophomore from Birmingham. And he'll draw the Elliott fouls along the way. First on Greg Elliott, fifth on Pitt. And you see Franklin to Moore. Moore, the only player that will come off the bench for Josh Pastor, is able to finish through the mismatch. Only two points for him in the game yesterday. Mm. Opportunity to outdo that here at the free throw line, un unable to do it. Nope. Free throw miss, three point game. So the fact that Malcolm Mackey knocked you out of the tournament, is he persona non grata the rest of the way? Well, being that I went five for 20 in that game, Malcolm Mackey might have got 15 rebounds of my own missed shots in that one. <laughs> five for 20. Hey, as a freshman, wow. too. As a freshman? As a freshman. <laughs> Pittsburgh by three. Here's Burton with the shot clock running down, the running one-hander, Jamarius Burton. He has really just matured as a basketball player. You can see how he's grown under toolage of Jeff Capel in Pittsburgh. First team, all ACC performer, and as you mentioned, many people had him as the ACC player of the year. Debo Coleman a spin and shot, and then Moore saved it by bouncing it out of bounds off of Greg Elliott. But how about the running one-hander here? There you go. Way to say it the right way. You see the follow-through. That's not a floater, people. That is a running one-hander. That's a teardrop. But when you follow through, it is not a floater. Respect my man WD for calling it the right way. There we go. Tend to shoot here for the Jackets, who trail by five. And deflected. Burton, I think, got a hand in. I tell you, Corey, when you watch Pitt play, you appreciate the connectivity of the team at both ends of the floor. And Jeff Capel talked about it. Everybody said, well, what about the four new guys? They looked at these guys based on the ability to connect with Burton and guys like Sabandi that were already there. Shot clock violation, defensive stop for the Panthers. And, and in my opinion, that is the reason why Jeff Capel was ACC coach of the year. It's not only because Pittsburgh won 14 ACC games. Right. But it's also the implementing new pieces into your system and more importantly, having them play together. You talk about, you know, we talk about Burton as an all ACC performer. He's not even the leading scorer for his team. But each and every one of these guys has been willing to sacrifice for the greater good. And that has been winning basketball games. Yeah. I mean, he even talked about, like, every guy coming in with their conversations with Burton and Sabandi and the coaching staff. And then you add a Federico, the Diaz-Graham twins. Kids like that. And, yeah, it took 10 games to kind of figure out the chemistry. It takes but that's a today's college basketball. That's it. You're not going to be as good in November as you're going to be in March. And right now in March, the Pitt Panthers are a not just a good team. They have a chance to be a great team and can do some damage in the tournament. Burton almost lost it on the dribble. Did. Threw it away. Outlet here is Terry. Moore the catch and score. Second field goal for Jalen Moore. Great hustle defensively by Franklin to be able to Save the basketball and then Terry with the kick ahead. And Terry deflected, Moore got it, and then he tried to fire it ahead to Terry and didn't get enough on it. Henson a deep three. Think about the turn of events. Almost turnover turns into a three-pointer on one end of the floor. We'll talk about a game answers again when we come back.
sideline and from turning it over to only turn into two points for Jalen Moore. Three different players tiptoeing the sideline or baseline ends up being a bucket for Georgia Tech. And a pit lead of eight now. Under five we go. Terry a catch and shoot on a three. And the rebound for Cummings. You watch Lance Terry, a couple of his threes have hit the front of the rim. That's a sign of fatigue, but great interior passing from Frederico inside to Henson. Pitts made their last five in a row from the floor. They pushed it to double figures for the first time. And Corey, you mentioned the energy, the narrow bench here, only six guys really playing for Passner's team. There's an unforced error turned over by Franklin and a 10 point game. And Quick check here of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. You'll see, of course, first round action tonight with West Virginia and Texas Tech. The Sooners and Cowboys, they always get along very swimmingly at 9.30. Championship Saturday, I believe my man Dickie B is going to be on the call in the wow. Big 12. How about that? Here's Elliott, three ball from the right. Yep. WD, we go back, and I watched Pittsburgh early in the season. Yep. When they lost the games to Michigan and VCU in, in the in-season tournament. It seems as though Greg Elliott at that time was trying to find his way. He was a little over-aggressive offensively. Now you see everyone playing their role, and it's beautiful to watch the way that Pittsburgh has gelled as a group as yeah. the season's gone along. Patience is impressive, isn't it? Especially at both ends of the floor. Four to shoot here, Sturdivant. Soft jump shot good. Kyle Sturdivant. He's got four now on his second field goal. And the lead is 11. For Capels Panthers. Cummings. Bounce inside. There's Federico for the easy dunk. That's another example. It. Early in the year, we would have seen Nelly Cummings come off that screen and roll, fire a three. All right. He recognizes the mismatch, goes inside to Federico, who has an easy bucket. And once again, it's the greater good doing what's best for the team. Franklin hard to the basket, and it will roll in for Javon. <laughs> that time, the Jackets get the friendly spin. Javon Franklin facing up, turning Feder against Federico, able to finish through the contact opportunity for and one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business.
agree. Oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 Well done, Seth. Look forward to you guys at the break. We're going to play you Jim Beheim's comments from his presser here in just a moment. No. Diaz Graham inside will draw the foul. So Jim Beheim in the post-game media session here in the Coliseum in Greensboro after they lose to Wake Forest on the Williamson three at the horn goes in on his timeline. Did he retire last Saturday? Here's the coach. I always have the choice of retirement, but it's their decision uh, as to whether I coach or not. It always has been. I, I think you missed it. <clears throat> I gave my retirement speech on the court last Saturday, and I gave it in the press conference afterwards, and nobody except Will, William Payne figured it out. You're, you, you're going to retire? This is up to the university. You, you want to come back? I didn't say that. Uh, okay, but, so what are you saying? You're not saying you're retiring, but you're I not saying... I just said it. I don't know. So you don't know? Okay. I said this is up to the university. And you, you're not sure whether you're... When will you, when will, how will you make a determination about when you will come back? You're talking to the wrong guy. All right. There you go, Corey. Give well, me a thought. Well, my thought is, is basically he's saying that when, you, when you're when you talking to the wrong guy, he will not be the person who determines whether he comes back to coach or not. He says it's up to the university. So with that being the case, and we know Jim Beheim for 47 years, he's done things on his own terms. Mm -hmm. So right now, it seems to me, and again, this is just only my interpretation of listening to the sound, that he's leaving it up to the university to determine whether or not they want him to come back and coach or not. A couple of things here to put it in context. That would be athletics director John Wildhack and the chancellor at Syracuse, Dr. Kent Severu, who he is referring to. The second part about this from a context perspective is Jim Beheim has been quoted a couple different times here in the last seven or eight weeks saying there is a plan, a secession plan. I know what the plan is. They know what the plan is. And he's comfortable with it. So now... Is he putting the ball back in the court, so to speak, of not his decision, but their decision? If there's a secession plan in place, he's simply saying to the university, if you want that to take place now, mm. then you make that determination. Or if you want me to come back and coach, he would be willing to do so. That's what I gather from it. I could be completely wrong, but that's what I gather from it all. More coming up at the half with Fonz and Coach Greenberg and Michael Eves. There's a travel by Henson. So this story is starting to uh, filter through not just the Coliseum here in Greensboro, but most of college basketball. And of course, we're talking about, you know, 47 years as head coach, a thousand wins, 35 tournaments. And of course, the anniversary celebrated last weekend of the national championship won at the Superdome in New Orleans against Kansas in 2003. There's a knock away. Cummings in there. And now we're going to get a foul on Sturdivant as he and Cummings came away from the loose ball and were jockeying for position. And Sturdivant's going to be whistled for his second. Oftentimes, when you consider Pittsburgh and the fact that they're second in the ACC at three-point field goals made per game and what they do on the offensive end of the floor with four players that average in double figures, is lost in translation how good they are defensively. Yep. We've seen them out hedging ball screens, being able to get back. They're turning Georgia Tech over, and the energy that Jeff Capel's team plays on the defensive end of the floor is the reason why they're one of the best teams in the ACC. One and one here for Cummings. First appearance of the day for Nelly, 89%. And the free throw good. Trey, what can you add for us here? Well, you guys are talking about Coach Beheim, and I got word from someone that was also in the press conference that he also mentioned Coach K and Mike Bray and Roy Williams and how their situations were handled. So I don't have exact details, but he mentioned some of those guys in his press conference as well. All right. Well, one of the things that I would like to mention to Dre's point is Mike Bray's departure from Notre Dame was more so a mutual agreement, right. but it had a lot to do with the university's decision. Yep. So and I can kind of see what Coach Beheim is saying now when he says it's up to the university, especially if he puts himself in that same category. Cummings at three. Rebound for Sabandi. Nike back to the rack will score. First field goal for the senior. And the lead is 13. 
Speaking of sacrifice, Nike Sabandi's been a starter the majority of his career, but yep. you're talking about a young man who has, you know, taken on the role of the sixth man, of course, done it better than anyone in the ACC, sixth man of the year this year, but continues to give Jeff Capel everything that he can on every possession he's on the floor. Down low, here's Franklin. Look at the quick double team, and Javon Franklin traveled. So it'll go back over to the Panthers. With just more than a minute to go here in this first half. Boy, Capel's got to feel pretty good about the way his team's handled this opening 20 of the tournament. Very true, but, you know, important possessions here at the end of this first half to finish the first half on the right way. They built this 13-point lead. You don't want to try to give Georgia Tech any room to feel inspired going into that halftime locker room. This is where you really want to keep your foot on the pedal. Spot up at the... Circle for Burton. He's got 10. I want to tell you, Corey, feels like four of them are foul line jump shots. Well, again, he's taking shots that he's comfortable with and he's getting easy looks, but that's because he puts so much pressure on defense by attacking the rim. Final half minute of the opening frame. This is day two and game two here at the New York Life ACC tournament. Terry fights through traffic and scores. Lance Terry had an early three. Now he's got five. Lead still 13 for the Panthers, and they use it or lose it timeout here for Jeff Capel. With 14.3. We'll step aside. Jackets trail 44 31 to the Panthers. Here this first half, great to be with Corey Alexander, West Durham, and this Bayheim story, retirement or not, is going to take us all the way to Saturday night. I feel because it's not just an ACC thing; it's a college basketball. It absolutely is. You're talking about you know second and wins in, in Division One history. You're talking about 47 years on the sideline. Not to even mention the times that he was at Syracuse as an assistant coach, as well as a player. Yep. So more to come. Michael Eaves. With Seth and Fonz coming up in a moment. Here is Cummings a little, another running one-hander, and Diaz Graham's tip. Nah, he Somehow missed. didn't fall in. He missed it. That was a floater. <laughs> That'll take us to the half. Pittsburgh, the finals team, has lost three straight here at the ACC tournament. But this story of the uh, first half is about Georgia Tech had four guys play all 20 minutes, and Pitt is, as you like to say, sharing the sugar. They are sharing the sugar. Ten assists on those 16 made field goals. Brought to us by Boost Mobile. These first half stats has been able, Pittsburgh's been able to build a lead by sharing the basketball with great offensive possessions. Lance Terry tries to start Georgia Tech with a three, and Henson the rebound there. Winner of this meets the four seed Duke tomorrow in the second quarterfinal. Both these schools played the Blue Devils just once during the regular season. That ball got deflected off Henson's pass by Coleman, who also collects the turnover. And Debo can't finish in transition. Smart defensive play there by Henson, just continuing to back up, not allowing Coleman to make that contact. The back to back turnovers for the Panthers. Here's Miles Kelly, a quiet first half. He'll get a layup for his first field goal of the ball game and first points. Georgia Tech's leading scorer, nearly 15 a game in conference play. But that's his first marker of the afternoon. But a little fatigue. Three straight turnovers. Look no, out now. Be no layup for this one. Nope. I actually thought there might be a little more theatrics to that, well, too. Well, you're down. If you're not down, you may have a little more theatrics if you've got a lead on that one. But, you know, down double figures, the best thing for Franklin to do is exactly what he did. Make sure he got the short two points. Here's Federico on the block against Franklin. Fetty a little up and under. Did he travel? No, got fouled. Javon Franklin commits his second. 
Andrea Carter. Thanks, Wes. Well, I caught up with Coach Passner of Georgia Tech coming out of halftime, and he said defensively, they usually switch everything to stay out of rotations on the ball screens. He said instead, they're taking advantage of it. We are going to start to hedge, so look for them to continue to hedge. We saw it earlier. It led to a turnover. It led to some run-out opportunities. Defensively switching their coverage, and then offensively, he said we're not cutting hard enough. You've got to cut to the basket like you're getting a layup, and then out like you're going to get a three. He said we're stumbling through our half-court offense, so look for harder cuts as well. And Dre, of course, you're very close to the Pittsburgh bench. Have you seen much reaction from Coach Capel and his staff after three straight turnovers to start the second half? A lot of looking at each other, like what are we doing? You know, you know, coaching staffs—they just make eye contact with each other, like what is going on? Or how how teammates do when I look at West when he says something crazy, like what are you talking about? Similar to that, Dre? Or or like circuitous? Oh, yeah. How you looked at him wow. when he said that word? Thank you, Dre. Nice. Thank you, Dre. But Dre knows circuitous. <laughs> but that wasn't what she was talking about. Three ball Kelly. Miles Kelly, by the way, has got five of Georgia Tech's seven. In an eight-point game right now. Mm -hmm. You've got to give Georgia Tech a passing grade coming out of the locker room. We talked about Josh Pastner talking to his team, seeing if they had more in the tank for, for 20 more minutes. But here, here comes the other part about Georgia Tech. Four straight wins, six of the last seven, and a lot of it is second half. Momentum, Corey, and we're seeing Pastor's team maybe build a little bit here right now. Still trailing eight. Another defensive stop getting Kelly a good look. If he knocks that down, now you're talking about a five point game. Still got a great look at it, but if Jeff Capel right now, I may have a little concern about my team. We may need a timeout to reset. And you and Dave saw yesterday Florida State looked like they had a three possession game comfortably, right? Until about the what, last six minutes? And I'm sure that's something that Jeff talked to his team about at halftime. This team can come back. You know, they have that in them to be able to do it. They've seen it here already in the ACC tournament. Start of it. Leaves it for Coleman's three. Got it. Debo with a dozen. And there's the timeout. I, you knew that's coming. And Jeff Capel doesn't have much choice but to call that timeout. His team needs a reset here quickly. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. It is a 10 to 2 run for Georgia Tech to cut what was a 13 point deficit down to five. Let's check in with Dre. Yeah, guys, just listen into the pit huddle and Coach Capel really challenged his team to be stronger in every aspect on offense. He talked about them getting pushed off their lines, whether they're cutting, whether they're passing, whether they're attacking. So look for them to play a little bit stronger. But you all talked earlier about all the close games that Pitt has been in. He ended with, we have been here before. Let's be mature. Let's stick together and let's execute like that right there. Well, Dre, one of the reasons Pittsburgh is so great with their execution, especially after timeouts, is because they've got a guard that can post up. And of course, oftentimes as part of their rotation, Jeff Capel will put Jamarius Burton in ISO situations, and if he can't get by his defender, just turn and back him down. Federico continues to build his resume in the ball game now. And Javon Franklin adds to his play. He's got 13 now on his fifth field goal. Back to a five-point game. Given the climate of the two regular season games, Corey, this one's kind of following a similar script. There's Burton again. Tell you what. He's doing exactly what he did all conference season but, long. But that's the thing. You see him go, and if he can't beat his defender off the bounce, he's strong enough just to turn and back them down, get to a sweet spot. If you double, he drops it off, and if you don't, he finishes over the top. Coleman a three. Side rim miss. Got his own rebound. Right back for the hoop. 14 for Coleman, who had 10 yesterday against the Knowles. And Georgia Tech has some energy now, Wes. Yeah, they do. Again, you know, Pittsburgh had an opportunity to bury them at the end of the first half and coming out into the second half, but they allowed them to get some energy, and we see Franklin continuing to show off his energy. Oh, and there's the flare for you, WD. The game is much closer now, so we might as well go ahead and dunk it backwards on the break. Javon's got 15. Two dunks and a follow here in the second half. Three-point game. Burton trying to find room on Terry. Wheels in the lane, and it falls off the back. Three ball will tie. It's 
start of it. Into the corner, Terry baseline, lost it, feeds Franklin, there's the dunk. Federico's hurt. Franklin's got 17. It's a one point game. Franklin is having a tremendous impact on this game, attacking a tall defender, using his body to finish over the top of Federico, Federico. And then with the great defense, it's time to shine, WD. You want to sizzle? Franklin's got it for you. CC tournament. Cameron Hilda, the Whirling Dervish, and then Davian Williamson, the game winner. Wake Forest beats Syracuse at the buzzer, 77-74. The Deeks were excited. How about Nike, Sabandi, and William Jeffress excited in the tunnel for Pitt? Yeah, the Panthers were excited for Wake Forest, but right now they've got to get a little more excited for what they've got on their hands against Georgia Tech. The Ramlin wreck picking things up defensively. Four second-half turnovers for the Panthers already in five and a half minutes of play. Sabandi for Burton in the lineup during the break. Here's Henson. And the rebound from Miles Kelly. Kelly has only got five second half points to his credit. He's Georgia Tech's leading scorer. And Pastner, who worked magic a couple of years ago here in Greensboro, trying to do it again. As you see Josh Pastner running that Princeton offense, keeping Javon Franklin at that free throw line where he's been dangerous and, of course, has the ability to find his shooters. Coleman for the lead. It was an air ball, hit the glass, rebounded by Federico. Elliott, he lost it, and last touch by Pitt. Another great turnover by the Panthers. Yeah, great play defensively by Kyle Sturdivant, though. One dribble too many by Elliott getting into that painted area. Sturdivant knocking it off of his leg. They only had four in the first half, Corey. They've got five here in the second half. Still holding to the one-point lead. Lob for Franklin. Catch against Federico. Now Coleman from the right. See what Nellie Cummings does. Remember Burton over there on the bench with Sabandi into that lineup. Henson. Start of it lead. Franklin. Almost traveled. Kelly will give Georgia Tech the lead. And just great passing by Franklin as we've got a couple words being exchanged by these two teams. But a simple face cut by Miles Kelly getting behind the defense and then allowing Federico to know I just big boys you there. Mm. The Second on Puerto Rico, by the way. And here is Miles Kelly, who went for a 21 yesterday in the win against Florida State. Seven all in the second half. Georgia Tech's first lead since early in the first half. Eight for Kelly, all in the second half. <laughs> Jack gets by two, and Federico locks it right back up. Nice find by Nelly Cummings. Putting it into fourth gear, getting downhill, past his defender, and then dropping it off to his big fella, allowing him to finish. Federico now has got 19. He's seven for seven from the floor. Start of an attacks. Couldn't finish around the sophomore from Finland. Cummings right back at the Jackets, and it fell off the front. But Cummings didn't go to the basket to finish that one, WD. He went to try to draw contact and get a foul. He had an easy layup, just took away his concentration. Coleman, start of it. Here's Kelly. Fall away two. Nope. I don't think Kelly was on point, do you? I don't believe so right now. If I'm Burton, I'm not sure this is the time to push. Here's Cummings. He went baseline, stripped of it by Kelly. They're going to be free throws awarded on the whistle from Justin Porterfield. And it's on Kelly, his second, and the second on the Jackets. But Josh Pastor. Trying to recreate Bobby Crimmins' thin gold line from 1985. Pastor did it in 21. Can he do it again? Back after this.
be back tonight at 11.30 Eastern to break down all four second-round games here at the New York Life ACC Tournament. Post-game interviews, a look ahead to tomorrow's quarters, and always a surprise guest could drop by. You never know that the ACC Tournament crew. I can, see and Booz and Joel and Luke Hancock. I can tell you exactly what Luke and Joel and, and Booz are going to be talking about. What's that? They're going to be talking about Javon Franklin, who has 17 points, 11 rebounds, five of those offensive, and six steals to go along with his four assists in this game. He is stuffing the stat sheet for Georgia Tech. Nelly Cummings is three of three at the line. Well, it would fall right into some tournament headlines. I mean, we have had already close fits. You had the ball game yesterday with Dave with Georgia Tech and Florida State. One possession game last night, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, Corey. Leshevsky had a look at a three that would have tied it. Mike Bray's final game, of course. And now this afternoon, we got a, we think, potential retirement of Jim Beheim. And I will quote my guy Mike Bray when he says, is some juice in the building and right now there is some juice in the building for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets as they're able to operate very well on the offensive end of the floor. Pitch defense was stingy in the first half but Georgia Tech's found some rhythm here as of late. 54 all on the Terry jumper. Here's Cummings. Burton thought about it. Terry poked it away. They'll roll to the deck. Possession going to stay at the Panthers end of the floor. Well, we said going to break Josh Pastor's only got six guys. He's really playing here in the tournament. Bobby Kremen's shining moment was the 85 ACC title. Corey, you know, at the Omni and Kremen's leaned on John Sally, Scott Petway, Yvonne Joseph, Bruce Talrymple and Mark Price with Antoine Ford, Jack Mansell off the bench. To be honest with you, well, they, you they picked Price. up the uh, thin goal line moniker as Burton scores. Mark Price, John Sally. That's enough. <laughs> what about Bruce Dalrymple? Dalrymple was good, but Ooh. wait a minute. We're talking about Mark Price, one of the best ever to play in the ACC at the point guard position. And John Sally was special up front. Yep. And we got a foul off the ball. Yep. And Georgia Tech's played six guys today. Jalen Moore's come off the bench. But of those six guys, yeah. four have played the entire game. The that's only starter that's checked out at all is Kyle Sturdivant. That's when Jalen Moore came in. Outside mm -hmm. that, the other four starters have played the entire game. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Lance Terry never comes off the floor. He does not. I mean, you just don't see that today. No, no you don't. But Josh Pastor has found something that has worked and is working to perfection to get him back into this game in this second half. Two point game coming up on the midway point. Sabandi, he's been quiet. Not now. Gets a bucket. He's got five. Second field goal for Nike Sabandi. But this is the area of concern right now for the Panthers. Can they get stops? Mm. Georgia Tech is operating very well. And another great look. Miles Kelly able to knock down the three. He's got 11 all in the second half for Kelly. So Georgia Tech bidding to advance into tomorrow's quarterfinals here in Greensboro. You see that Wake Forest is there. They'll play Miami at noon. Duke awaiting the winner here of uh, the Panthers and Jackets. Carolina BC tonight. NC State Virginia Tech tonight. Of note, Corey. Those four teams only played each other one time during the course of the regular season. But these two teams have played each other twice yep. in the regular season. Now this third time, and you always hear it's difficult to beat a team three times. And Georgia Tech showing you why that is. So in this game right now, Jeff Capo, of course, concerned about his group. A very important game right. for Pittsburgh. A loss could be detrimental to them, but right now, Josh Pastor having no concern about Pittsburgh's NCAA tournament hopes. He's just trying to keep his team season alive. Well, and here's the other piece, too. Georgia Tech, 55% from the floor in the second half and no turnovers. That is huge. Cummings fights through. Here's Sabandi. Pull up on the baseline. Missed everything, and... Diaz Graham, that's Guillermo with the follow. And the, the foul on uh, Sturdivant's his third. That's the that's one the area third. for Georgia Tech that you want to say you have to shore it up, but difficult to do when you're playing so undersized on the interior. 
You're talking about a seven footer with a six foot one guard trying to check him out. Guillermo is the older of the twins. And of course he wears 25 which comes before 31 and that's what Jorge wears. And Guillermo also with a G Jorge with a J so you keep them straight that way by the way just in case they were to never. So so it comes in alphabetical order. G and J. Guillermo's the oldest. Okay. He's the G. Okay. J is Jorge. He was the second one. Ah, more. see, that's why I hang out with you. You break down all the details <laughs> I need to know. Still hadn't told me about security yet. I'm waiting on Kim Belton to tell me. Or Dre, one of the two of them. Terry the shot. Franklin the rebound. And we got a pit foul on Federico. Third on Fetty. And that'll be the third on Pitt. Oh, it's the fourth. I beg your pardon on Federico. That is the third on Pitt. See, that's a big foul right there. And of course, see, I'm a numbers guy. So, of course, if you start throwing big words at me like circuitous, then I have zero idea what that means. But yeah. of course, I've got backup, so I know it means pretty much in a roundabout way. But you know me, I've always been about numbers. That's my thing. I know. Yeah. Like five of 22, four of 19. I, I was I was four of 19. We corrected that. Brian Stiff was four of 22. Yeah, here is Franklin the dunk. Javon Franklin, 10 and a half now, 19 in the ball game. WD, you know how they say men lie, women lie, numbers don't. But numbers don't always tell the whole story. That two points, yeah, for Franklin means a whole lot more than just two points. Yep. When you start dunking on people the way that he is in the painted area, that puts fear in the hearts of these young fellas he's got to go up against right now. Got his own rebound on the miss, right back, and draws another foul. Remember, he had a Georgia Tech ACC tournament record yesterday with, what, 19 rebounds? And he may go above that today. And speaking of going above, he goes well above the rim. It doesn't matter who steps up, which twin is is the older or the younger, he makes sure he passes out his fear mm. equally to both twins. Franklin, by the way, three or four at the line now. Drazy gets two here. Well, and he is doing exactly what his head coach told him to do in the last huddle. Coach Patner, Passner looked right at him and said, hey, when you are that close to the basket, go score. With Frederico on the bench, you have to imagine he is thinking score every time. Javon to the stripe, three of four. And misses that. He's got 19 points, 13 rebounds, four assists. And Corey already told you about the half dozen steals. And he's putting so much pressure on Pittsburgh that as you see Frederico Frederico on the bench, you have to just wonder how long Jeff Cable can afford to keep him over there with Franklin having the dominance that he's had. Kelly a three. Nope. Still a one point lead for Pitt. Under nine we go at the Coliseum in Greensboro. Georgia Tech's had a number of good looks from three where they could have blown this thing open a little bit. Just unable to knock them down. Here is Burton. Kick into the corner for Elliott. Big three ball for Greg Elliott. The response. That's where you're talking about a good team. When you can respond when teams or things are not going your way, mm. teams are making a run. You step up with that. So one of the reasons why the Panthers had seven road wins this year, they know how to respond. Terry slices through and scores. Boy, Lance Terry, tough shot in traffic. Now with nine. It's a lot of toughness on this floor for both these teams, WD. One of the reasons why this conference, in my opinion, is one of the best simply because you've got teams who play together, play well with different styles from their coach. Burton right back at the Jackets at 16. It's a four-point lead for Pitt. Panthers who have won 21 games, 14 in the ACC. Kick into the corner for Terry and a bump and a foul on Elliott. That will be his third and the fifth on Pitt. Tobias Burton attacking downhill, finding his teammate Greg Elliott lining up the three ball from the corner pocket. On the other end, Lance Terry not deterred by the contact. His two is good. On ESPN College Basketball Live to prep the day at 6 o'clock. Reese and the guys look at the men's field of 68 as the brackets are announced. 
Bracketology takes over, presented by Lowe's at 7 at 8 o'clock. The women's special presented by Capital One. Dre will be on the job there. Continuing coverage on ESPNU at 9 and at 10 Eastern. Even more coverage of both brackets. Always streaming live on the ESPN app. If it's Wednesday, it must be Greensboro for Dre. <laughs> That's the way I'm going. <laughs> I mean, she's moving. I mean, moving, Corey. Uh, that, that's what she does. She stays on the move. My God. So, so Just, Wednesday's Greensboro, right? Yes. Wednesday, got it. Okay. Just trying to keep up with you two. Just trying to keep Stop. up, guys. That's it. Dre trying to keep you in one spot is probably more difficult than guarding Georgia Tech's offense right now. As Kyle Sturdivant is able to get into the bucket and gets the easy one. And right now, the rambling wreck making it a one possession game once again. They are operating very well offensively here in the second half. This is what we've seen from them yep. during this four game winning streak. Sure is. This is kind of when it starts. The last seven, you saw it yesterday against Florida State. Really, they've only had, if you go back and look at Georgia Tech's win streak here, they're not too many, you know, as an old coach one time called them to me, leg crossers. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, Eight point win at Boston College, one point yesterday. They did have the big 20 point win at Syracuse. They did comfortably beat Louisville. Seven point win against Virginia Tech, two point win against Notre Dame on the Lance Terry follow, Corey. So, I mean, they're. They usually play the full 40, in and, other words. And we also mentioned Pittsburgh, of course, used to playing close, close games, winning five of seven games. Within three points or less, so yep. they they're in comfortable territory. Are the Panthers right now? Three shoot, Elliott squares on Franklin. How about that? The net didn't move till the ball reached the bottom. Well, we, that's why they're so comfortable. They've got guys that can step up and make big plays, regardless of how much time is left on the shot clock. Five point lead. Here's Sturdivant and Diaz Graham. Guillermo the foul these are the best ones WD because they don't even make a sound it's almost as though the basketball barely even touches the net as it drops through all right now Pitt just sent Georgia Tech to the one and one Corey with 645 to go the Jackets are 7 of 12 at the line in ACC play they shoot 68 percent well so we'll say it's not their strength so maybe good fouls for the Panthers as Georgia Tech comes away with the empty possession. Yep. The only problem there is Federico Federico with four fouls and you don't want to get guys in foul trouble. Look alone is Diaz Graham Guillermo the dunk. He's and got five but a great play once again by Burton. You see his value to this team not only as a score but a playmaker as well. Start of it off the screen. Trying to drive Sabandi to the basket. Got caught in the air. Travel call by Ramey Steins. That is the first turnover of the second half for Georgia Tech. Josh Passion wants a timeout to talk it over right now. He mm. can see Pittsburgh starting to find a rhythm with some type of well separation right now. And Javon Franklin has been the star for Georgia Tech here this afternoon, Corey. He absolutely has been that. The steal. And heard you talk about no sizzle on the first dunk. So make sure he gives you some on the second one. Then snatching the board off the rim. Going back, finishing through the contact. Attacking bigger bodies. Through the contact, still able to finish. And one opportunities. And then just strong with the basketball. Using his body to finish over taller defenders. Javon Franklin has been spectacular, especially when he starts throwing it down with two hands. Yep. Big day for Franklin. 19 points, 13 rebounds, four assists, half dozen steals. Look at the work that's been going on. Well, he's putting together an early all-tournament resume. Of course, his team will most likely have to play more games to make that happen, but his performance... I know how you and Kim Belton like to get out the measuring stick on people's height. 
I just see. see Javon, Javon's listed at 6'7". I'm not even going to let you throw my man Kim Belton under the bus with that. That's all me. Okay. I, I know real heights when I see them. Elliott on the drive, missed the layup. Franklin the rebound. Start of it on the run. Kelly spots. Big bucket. Great play by Sturdivant to be able to recognize when his teammate, their best three-point shooter, their best score, and Miles Kelly would be filling the lane, but give Frank the credit once again, defending at the rim. 14 for Kelly, Jackets to within four. Inside, Henson the strong move and hoop. Eight now for Blake Henson. Nice response that time by the Panthers going inside to the 235 pound junior. Yeah, not the traditional post feed, but still Henson able to bring it in, showing off those great hands that made him that tight end that so many Division I schools were covering. Yep. And at this particular rate, you can leave Federico over there if yes. you're Jeff Capel? Yes, you can. Wait till the under four timeout. As long as you continue to have some type of separation. But Diaz doing a great job stepping in for Federico at this point. Henson completes the trip. He had two double doubles against the conference this year. 11 games, though, with three or more threes made in a game in ACC play. It's the reason he was second team All ACC on this special year for the Panthers. Their highest seeding. Since their first year in the league, there's a drive and Sturdivant couldn't get the roll. The foul will be on Cummings. And for Nellie Cummings, his second. And it'll be the eighth of the half on Pittsburgh. And there is 48-year-old Jeff Capel, native of Fayetteville, of course, as Corey told you, played in this league at Duke. And there's Miss Jerry. Mama Kate. Yep. Got to be proud of her son. Sons. And sons, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Don't want Jason after me. That's it, both those guys. Free throw good for Sturdivant. There's Jason, of course, who played at Carolina. Milan Brown, Tim O'Toole round out that staff. Terrific building project, Corey, that's gone on in Pittsburgh. And it speaks to, and I say this a, a couple different times this year, speaks to the understanding of Heather Like, the athletic director, to know what that job was going to be for Jeff Capel and how they had to get it done. And more importantly, the patience yep. of the Pittsburgh athletic program to give Jeff Capel the time to be able to establish what they've been able to establish this season. Yeah, not easy to come from the depths of where Pitt was when Capel got that job in March of 2018. Eight to shoot here for Burton. His team up five. The whirl in the lane and the score with the right hand. Patience in the painted area. Burton just runs back smiling, showing off his fancy footwork. Well, he is a talented, impactful basketball player in every phase of the game for these Panthers. Jackets got to find a way here. Franklin inside, and he stepped on the end line off the catch. That'll turn it over. Just the second one of this half on Pastor's team. And WD, we talked about Pittsburgh staff. We got to make sure that we mention Milan Brown, associate head coach, yep. who was was the Bradley Award winner for the ACC this season. Milan had a heart attack last spring, mm. and of course, is recovering perfectly back to full time duties. Guillermo Diaz Graham missed the three. Franklin another rebound. Tech on the bounce. Kelly whips one baseline. Here's Terry blocked out of there by Guillermo. That's one you just got to know where you are on the floor. Cummings will try and hedge and block out Franklin and score. And that time Cummings did the right thing. He concentrated on finishing, but he shielded off the shot blocker knowing that he could not score that over top of Franklin. Inside four to go. The lead is nine for the five seed. Sturdivant cuts into it. How about Kyle Sturdivant? Yeah. This is this young man was benched midway through the season. He wasn't playing at all for Josh Pastor after having major turnovers at the point guard position. But stuck with has found his way back into the role as a starting point guard, playing close to 40 minutes a game now. Here's Henson working to the foul line against Kelly. And Coleman finally comes away with it out of the fray. 
Coleman trailing three. Oh, Debo. 17 for Coleman now. He's got four threes in the game. The Yellow Jackets are not going away. Debo Coleman stepping up, knocking down the big three. And we've seen Kyle Sturdivant get out in transition and patiently wait for his three-point shooters multiple times. Cummings, a scoop and score. Six and a half, 11 in the ball game for the young man from Midland, Pennsylvania. Played at Lincoln Park. Six-point lead again. Winner gets Duke tomorrow. In the second quarter final around 2.30. Kelly on the drive. That's going to be a block on Guillermo Diaz Graham. That'll get us to a break in the action. 2.20 to go in Greensboro in our second second round game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by New York Life. Over 12,000 agents there to help guide you through life's happiest and most difficult times. Pitt 79, Georgia Tech 73. Great to be with Corey Alexander, Andrea Carter, West Durham here at the Coliseum in Greensboro. And already, we're only into our fifth game, three of the four previous decided by one possession. Two games with less than a second to go. We have bid farewell to the great Mike Bray, and we think Jim Beheim is seriously thinking about retirement based on the post-game comments, huh? Is that what we're thinking? I'm not really sure what we're thinking on regarding I, that. Look, I'm going to tell you now. Miles Kelly at the line. Got an opportunity. We came back to see the a former ACC Player of the Year. Chris Carrawell is also a national champion. Yeah, he is. And Emil Jefferson. Also so won a national championship, right? The, the Blue Devils in scouting their opponent for tomorrow foul on Diaz Graham Kelly responded it's a four-point game and that got blocked out of bounds that's the other thing Ooh. that Franklin does one of the ACC's leading shot blockers yep came in with 51 on the year and we've talked about his athleticism but how about his timing to catch it right at the apex, as soon as it leaves Burton's hands, not picking up a foul. But look, 19 points, 15 rebounds, six deals, and let's just throw a block in there yeah. for good measure. But just so you can check that category. Two oh seven to go in a four-point game. Ten to shoot. Henson out of the corner. Nope. And Coleman the rebound. Okay, if you're Josh Pastor now, you got five team fouls. You're going to be double bonus on your next foul by Pitt. Here's Terry. Tried to scoop it up and no whistle. Tech bench thought they might get one there. Instead, it stays a four point game with 93 seconds to go. Good no call there. That would have been five with Federico Federico, but he stayed vertical on that possession. Burton. Winding in on Terry and one. It's a tough shot, and this shows you what he means to his team, too. Not only what he means to his team, but what he means to this league. And when you think about Pittsburgh and their chances moving forward, trying to solidify an NCAA tournament bid, their guy, who many felt was the ACC Player of the Year, Jamarius Burton, Going to work down the stretch. Josh Pastner disappointed because he knows there's nothing you can do about that. Yep. Six point lead now. Burton to try and make it three possessions and does. First free throw of the day. Burton's got 21, Corey. 10 field goals. And he's done all of his damage inside the painted area. Not settling for threes. Stays in attack mode. 70 seconds to play. That's a two from Sturdivant. He's got a dozen on his fifth field goal. Final minute of play in regulation. And Burton and Pitt, if Georgia Tech will let them, they'll wind this down. They absolutely will. Take as much time as you want, but you've got the basketball in the hands of the guy you want taking this shot at the end of the shot clock. Ten to shoot. Burton, Henson tees one up. That 
is a crusher. That makes it eight with 40 seconds left. Now you're talking about a three possession game. Start of it to the basket. And we get a whistle and a foul. And the foul is on Henson. It's his third. It's the tenth on Pitt. So two free throws for Georgia Tech. Once again, Demarius Burton making the right play, recognizes the mishap from Georgia Tech. Both players go with him. He knows his guy. Uh, his other all-ACC teammate, Blake Henson, is going to be open. Finds him right in rhythm, allows him to knock down his second three-point field goal of the afternoon. Burton's got eight assists and 21 points. The start of it hits the free throw. This stat sheet's going to look like an NBA stat sheet. You got guys putting up heavy numbers. Yep. Throughout this game. I mean, you got 19 points, 16 rebounds from Franklin. No, don't forget the six See, deals. Six deals, <laughs> right? And the block, right? Federico, 19 and 8. Yeah. And here's Cummings, Cummings for Federico. So they take what might be a, a lesser free throw shooter off the floor and bring Cummings back at nearly 90%. But you want the basketball in the hands of Burton, of Cummings. They got to feel like Georgia Tech, what, goes for the steal here if they don't get it foul? Corey? Yes, absolutely. You want to make sure you give yourself as much time as you possibly can without the trap. Oh, and they got Cummings. Nelly thought he had cleared the fray, and then Terry commits his fourth. That is seven on Georgia Tech, so one and one here. Josh Pastner, who two years ago in this building, coming out uh, with COVID restrictions in place, not big crowds. Of course, he's known he wore that face shield in that tournament run that year. They beat Florida State here in the championship. We lost some games in the tournament there for COVID restrictions and regulations back then. Free throw the one and one for Cummings rolls out. Yeah, we still got that memory of Josh Pastner yeah. cutting down the nets with his visor still on. Yep. But that was his signature look at the time. And let's also remember the fact that he had the ACC Player of the Year yep. and Moses Wright and the ACC Defensive Player of the Year and Jose Alvarado wow. with him. Yep. And it was a great week <laughs> for the Yellow Jackets as Josh yep. Pastner gets his first ever ACC championship. Yep. Josh Pastor answer to a trivia question though you asked how many head coaches have ever won a national championship as a player and as I'm sorry forgive me a national championship as a player in the ACC tournament championship as a coach Josh Pastor would be one of the very few yep. to have done that yep was a player in 97 at Arizona right mm -hmm. Miles Simon was the most outstanding player that year for the Wildcats. And he is a native of Kingwood, Texas, proud Houston area product. Yeah, he threw in for good measure. He's also won a Peace Jam championship with Houston Hoops <laughs> when he was a teenager coach at AAU. Yeah. Well, a win by Pitt, and we would get the second meeting of the year between the Panthers and the Blue Devils. Duke won 77 to 69 at Cameron on January the 11th in a game more noted for Duke just getting after Pitt at the offensive glass. It was a, a lot of that, but that that game at Cameron Indoor, where Jeff Capel, of course, played his entire college basketball career. Right. Maybe a little different here at Greensboro Coliseum. More Panther fans in the building, but I can tell you right now, when the Blue Devils come into the building, they're always going to have fans, well, whether it's at Cameron or in Greensboro Coliseum. Tell you this, the night session in this building will have a little flavor to it because NC State and Carolina both make their ACC tournament debut tonight. Absolutely. It, as my guy Mike Bray says, as we bid farewell to him, it's going to be some juice in the building. Yep. And... Prior to a five second call, a timeout awarded to Pitt. Looked like Greg Elliott got it called before the five second count. So a four point lead for Pitt with 22 seconds left to go, but already a winner today, the Demon Deacons. Corey, oh, wait, let's roll some 22 in the house.
1995. Best, the flat out best ACC tournament performance of all time. My little big brother, <laughs> Randolph Childress, stepping up, making big shots, big plays when his team needed them most. And of course, Davian Williamson stepping up and making the biggest shot for the Demon Deacons this season here in our first game this afternoon. 95, Childress went for 37 in the championship game, overtime win. Randolph had uh, 30 in the semifinals. 40 piece to start it off. Though. That is correct. <laughs> Where he was 13 of 18 from the floor and 8 of 12 from three. And a foul by Georgia Tech when we reach the front court. Yellow Jackets foul is whistle on number three, Debo Coleman. And uh, the reason he was the MVP of the tournament, of course, was that you were out, right? I broke my ankle. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 If, if not for that, none of that would ever happen. I know Dre is fascinated to hear that the only reason one of the great moments in ACC tournament history exists is because Corey was not available for injury. I mean, I asked you to go back and look at what happened in 1993, right? Who sent him home I, in 93? I understand that, but Dre, just so you know, one of the greatest performances in ACC history. Well, uh, listen, it depends on if that was early 93. You guys don't want to know what I was doing. I wasn't born yet. See, Thanks. See, I'm yeah, sure it was go. a top performance. That's, there we go. Really happy yeah. for you. You know Appreciate what? It. Why Thanks. did we even open her microphone in well, the first place? Kim Belton is a legendary producer. He, he just wanted us to take that shot to the heart. I get it. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. No, Dre. thanks, Dre. Dre, thank you. Appreciate it. Follow shot, Sturdivant. And Elliott the rebound and a foul by Terry. Lance Terry is going to foul out of the ball game with nine. And Pitt will go to the line and on their way to their 22nd win. Terry fouls out and Josh Pastner will have to put Jalen Moore on the floor. I believe here for the final. Only a couple seconds. Three disqualifications the entire season for Georgia Tech. Yeah. Which would be a record. Mm -hmm. No, if Terry's fouled out, this will be the fourth. Correct. But the record is five for a season for Georgia Tech. So for Josh Pastor at this point, he's hoping no one else fouls out. Yeah. And I think they're checking the clock here among other things which is an amazing stat when you consider the fact that he's playing guys 40 minutes guys are playing the entire game yet still able to play without fouling out and by the way for the first time in the last three games Georgia Tech has to make a substitution in the second half when we say thing go line we're not kidding you 87 <laughs> 81 Corey Pitt and Duke tomorrow. Jeff That'll be Capel, all you want. Jeff Capel, John Shire, both assistant coaches for Coach K. Yeah. Doing the 2015 National Championship team for the Blue Devils. And very good friends. But they will not act like it tomorrow here in Greensboro. Oh. Don't forget Dave O'Brien, Jay Billis will be here tonight. Carolina Boston College followed by NC State and Virginia Tech. Virginia and Clemson await the winners of those games in our quarterfinal. 89-81. It's a eight-point victory. Jamarius Burton, when his team needed him most in this second half, took the game over. Not